Hello, everyone, and inside today's Locked On Canadians, the Habs and Rangers went to a shootout. Habs didn't look too bad for a team missing two more players due to injury. I have your recap and so much more inside today's show. You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 802 of Locked on Canadians. As always, thank you for making us your first listen of the day every single day here as part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you for subscribing wherever you get your daily podcasts. And as always, thank you if you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you for subscribing there. Ring the bell to get notified every time we post a new episode. I am your host. I am Scott Matlow, of course. I am flying solo for the next little bit here. And we will get into the Habs-Rangers game in a moment. At this point, I was going to talk about the few injuries that we had that we knew about early on in uh, today. The Canadians announced before the game that Jordan Harris is day-to-day with a lower body injury and that Christian Dvorak is also day-to-day with a lower body injury, which meant Anthony Richard was called up from the Laval Rocket and Caden Gooley returned to the Canadians lineup. And boy, trust me, is there a lot more on Caden Gooley coming up? But post game now, because they buried this right in there, they have medical updates. Kirby Doc is out indefinitely. We do not know what is wrong with Kirby Doc at this point. Brendan Gallagher, lower body injury, will be out for another three to four weeks, potentially back for the end of the season. And Arbor Jacki underwent shoulder surgery on March 1st. He is expected to be ready for training camp that we already kind of knew. And all I say is, for the love of God, what the hell is going on with this team? I I do not know what is wrong with Kirby Doc at this point. And it's concerning that he very clearly played through an injury and is now out indefinitely as someone who's supposed to be a key part of this team. Brendan Gallagher, he's been banged up basically since the start of the season. He came back healthy and that lasted a month, maybe. And then it's just been downhill after that. It was good to see Caden Gooley back, Justin Barron skating in a non-contact jersey before practice, which is also appreciated. Um, Losing Dvorak and Jordan Harris, not great, though. With Dvorak out up for this game, there is one Montreal Canadian left who has not missed a game this season. And that is Nick Suzuki for the, like, feels like the third year in a row. I don't know how he's doing it. I'm not going to jinx it. I'm knocking on wood right now. I don't want to focus too much on the injuries. We'll learn more after the weekend is over, I'm sure, and I will have much more to say on that. I actually want to focus on the Canadians-Rangers game tonight because, one, Caden Gooley came back from injury, and Caden Gooley opened the scoring 35 seconds into this game. We love to see that. And not only did he score, he scored a great goal. It was chipped in deep. He spins and just smacks the puck right by Igor Shosturkin. Great goal, high skill goal, absolutely love that for Gooley. And just across the board, he played great tonight. Alex Belzeal had his third goal uh, in three games. He's on a goal-scoring streak right now, which is not a thing I ever expected to say at the NHL level. Josh Anderson had a beautiful shorthanded goal as well. They lost in the shootout. Nick Suzuki's shootout streak is over this year. He is now 5 of 6, and they got a loser point. If you're keeping track for the tank here, the Canadians still sit in sixth place because Vancouver got a point in overtime the night before. They won in overtime, if if I remember correctly. It was late. It was past my very 32-year-old bedtime. And the Arizona Coyotes were sitting at 54 points, I believe. Even if they won in regulation, the Canadians could not drop below them into the bottom five. They will hold steady at sixth overall, which is, it is fine the changes are not going to happen immediately here. We talked about this in the mock draft a little bit. Florida is down into 13. They've won two in a row. Montreal still sits at six, four points out of the top five. There, an eight and a half percent chance at Connor Bedard, but that's okay because they played well in this game. And I look at this, I look at this Rangers team 
And I'm going to put a graphic up here on the screen for uh, those of you watching on YouTube. I will. Uh, I tweeted this from my personal account earlier on from Hockey Scorecards. It is a stunning display by the Montreal Canadiens. I'm going to post that up here right now. If you are looking at this on your screen right now, the more bars going to the right side of this chart, the better. And as you can tell, the Canadians had that covered in spades. Caden Cooley, Alex Belzeal, Dennis Gurionov, Chris Tierney, Joel Edmondson, Rem Pitlick, Michael Pozzetta, Josh Anderson, Chris Weidman, Jonathan Kovacevic, Mike Matheson, Anthony Richard, Jonathan Drouin, and Raphael Harvey Pinard. The Canadians at five on five in this game speed bagged the Rangers. The Rangers are an extremely deadly power play team right now based on who is on in their lineup. In this game, I could not tell you if Vladimir Tarasenko was playing. Mika Zibanejad had scored the shootout winner. He had rang one off the post. They mostly kept him in check. They kept Chris Kreider in check. They kept Artemi Panarin in check. Patrick Kane finally scored one goal. His first as a Ranger, and he had an assist. He was completely ineffective anywhere but the power play where he can have space to operate. The Canadians came out, and in back-to-back games, now they've lost five games in a row, mind you, but the last two have been ex- – they've been competitive in a lot of these games – but the last two are ones that I want to highlight because they're teams that are supposed to be coming out of the East and as a threat to the Western Conference and potentially a Stanley Cup contender. And they have taken both the Rangers and the Hurricanes into shootouts where the Canadians' fourth line, that Alex Belzeal, Chris Tierney, Michael Pizzetta trio, is causing people all sorts of nightmares, night in and night out. Including in there also Mike Matheson, who played almost 30 minutes tonight. Jonathan Drouin, who's looking a lot more dangerous. Caden Gooley looked very good. And yeah, the stats aren't super flashy in terms of expected goals. Like, Kane, well, actually, Caden Gooley's are. He ended up at a 58% expected goals percentage tonight. Alex Belzeal finished at 94.6% at 5 on 5. In case you want to know how badly the Canadians' fourth line pummeled the Rangers, Pizzetta, Tierney, and Belzeal were the top three on the Canadians overall at 5 on 5. Really good game. If they had lost in regulation, it would have been even better for the tank overall, but they deserved a point out of this game. And yeah, I know we want them to lose, get as few points as possible. This is a game that they easily could have won. Josh Anderson could have had a hat trick by the time this was over. It went to a skills contest and they lost because guess what? They don't have Cole Caulfield. They don't have a lot of their other top guys here. And you know what? Who cares? They didn't get two points. They'd still sit in sixth place one way or the other. Uh, Obviously, they're not going to pass Arizona tonight. So in these tough games, the Canadians are showing a lot of grit and they're showing a lot of heart. And I think that's what you want. And they're not getting reinforcements here. Gallagher's not going to be back anytime soon. We don't know how long Dvorak and Harris are going to be out. They say day to day, but who knows? Doc will not be back this season. Arbor Jack Eye is done. Caulfield is not coming back this season. Jake Evans is skating a little bit. They're still missing so many bodies that they're not going to get back. Slavkovsky is not going to be back this season. And they're still doing this to playoff teams. It's a good sign going into next year. And I know people are going to yell at me, you got to lose. I understand they got to lose. They're not going to pass Columbus or San Jose at the bottom of the standings. There's too much of a difference. And I don't think either of those two teams are going to go on a winning streak anytime soon. I hate to say it. Yeah, increase your odds. But at this point, I'm going to start looking at Leo Carlson and Mitchkov more than Fantilli or Bedard. And I will happily be wrong whenever that time comes around. To shift gears a little bit. You are listening to this on Friday, and Friday always means it is time for our Friday mailbag, where we answer all of your listener questions, and that's coming up in just one moment. But first, the midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000, and that's in bonus bets if your first bet does not win at FanDuel. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. You can bet on everything from money line to point scores to three strained in the game. And if you're feeling froggy, you can combine all of them for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay and cash out anytime. So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA and us here at Locked On. 
We are back here at Locked On Canadians. Please remember, always gamble responsibly. It is Friday. That means it is the Friday mailbag. If you ever want to send us mailbag questions at LO underscore Canadians on Twitter, Locked On Canadians at gmail.com. We're going to dive right into things here. And the biggest thing is um, we got a few questions here that I'm going to try and space out to give a little bit more detail to. And the biggest one that came up first comes from Brady Piercy on Twitter. Say the Habs pick third, 13th, and 35th overall with both Bedard and Fantilli off the board. Who would I like the Montreal Canadiens to pick? And this is a very easy question for me because at third overall, I'm taking Leo Carlson every single time. He is not the most exciting, but he is damn good at what he does. He is the, maybe not better than Mitchkov. Admittedly, Mitchkov is a much more skilled player, I think, than Leo Carlson, and that is not a disparaging statement to Leo Carlson. I'm going to take Leo Carlson, though, because I think he is exactly what the Canadians could use in this system. Another high-end centerpiece there. And at 13th overall, you have any number of options. If I go to Tankathon right now, and I'm looking at their mock draft, at 13th overall, where the Canadians are picking, they would pick Axel Sanding Pelica which I'm going to have Patrick Bexell on in the next couple of weeks here to talk about that. I would be over the moon with that kind of pick. I would also say yes to Dvorsky or if someone like Andrew Cristal fell out, even taking a chance on someone like Gabe Perot out of the USDP. There's so many options that they can do there. And 35th overall, everything, it all depends on who's there. I see names like Tanner Molendijk. I see a Luca Pinelli there. Uh, Casper Helton and who I talked about in the other episode could be there possibly too. Charlie Strammel, who we talked with Tony Ferrari and other people about the options are there that the Canadians can get creative. They can go big at third overall, get Leo Carlson and then swing for the fences at 13, go for a Pelica, go take a chance on a Helton and at, you know, 35th overall, if that's where you're at. And this isn't including what other picks they might end up with because Joel Edmondson is a still of interest to teams, They just want to see him play, which, okay, understandable. Uh, Up next, this one comes from Goalie Droid. What do you want to see the Habs do in regards to injuries going forward? They can't keep having this happen every year into all of their prospects. One, hard agree on that. Some of them are not their fault. Slavkovsky getting injured, you you can't do anything about that. Players playing through injuries... You can do something about that. And the biggest thing is, I don't know if they need to update and get new medical personnel into this team or athletic trainers or change their training regimens or what. But if you are hurt, sit down. It does not matter, especially in a season like this. And yes, hockey players are prideful. We know this. They play through God knows what all the time. Stop doing that in these seasons. You as a team have to eventually kind of know when to say, stop it, enough is enough. You're putting your body through too much here. And I think that's a hard part, especially this year where they're so thin and they don't want to just keep throwing younger guys or AHL call-ups into the fire. Unfor- Ironically, that's where they've ended up now. Without Christian Dvorak, like their only other NHL full-time center on the roster, and that's loose, is Chris Tierney. It's Nick Suzuki and Chris Tierney. That's not exactly what you would call a good way to integrate young guys here. Harvey Pennard and Yelonen are learning on the fly, and they're performing about as well as they can. We've seen it on defense. Doing this is going to burn out your young guys, where they're continuing to not get the results and progress because they're playing top lines. Like You're going to see Harvey Pennard and Yelonen matched up against like Patrice Bergeron at some point here in the near future against guys like Sebastian Ajo and other talented players. And it's hard to battle against that. The biggest thing is they have to start putting their foot down. It's like, if you're hurt, you're hurt. Sit down. We'll call someone up. We'll put someone in that spot. Swallow your pride and make that happen. Um, One more question in this segment that we're going to transition into our third segment. The rest of the questions there. What has been your most surprised moment of the season so far? Honestly, beating Toronto on opening night was great because it was nice to see Sean Monaghan get that goal and then Josh Anderson win it with like 30-something seconds left. The biggest surprise for me has been the play of the the, wrong, the young rookies on defense. Jordan Harris has been steady. Jonathan Kovacevic has been very good. Caden Gooley has been a standout. Arbor Jack, I was a menace. I love that. Cole Caulfield's goal scoring pace. I'm not surprised by that. 
I really wish he could have had a chance to hit 40 this year. It's really disappointing that he's not going to get that opportunity, but I think that's only going to fuel him going into next season, honestly. Uh, also of a surprise, Samuel Montembeau. Good for him. Good for uh, snacks, apparently, is his nickname, which means it's snack time every time he starts. I'm making this a thing, whether you like it or not at this point. He's been a big surprise for me. Now that he's playing not with an injured wrist, I'm glad the Canadians gave him the contract they did because he's earning it. He's been very good. Jake Allen's been very good since returning from injury. Not good enough to win games, good enough to steal a point, but not good enough to win the game fully, which, okay, fine. What are you going to do about it? Team's been full of surprises, good and bad this year, but I do think the young guys stepping up the way that they have has been the most important part. Uh, Sound off in the comments. You know, what are your most surprising moments this year? Games, players, moment, you know, goals, anything across the board. Let us know. Tweet us at LO underscore Canadians too. We always want to hear your opinions. Coming up, we got some of the off-topic questions. Have a little bit of fun to end the show after a Canadian's loss. All that's coming up next. We are back here at Locked On Canadians. I am, of course, your host, Scott Matloff. Follow me on Twitter at Scott Matloff. Follow the show at LO underscore Canadians. We're going to dive into some of the more fun off-topic questions. This one calls from comes from Paul Brand Show. What is what is a more appropriate goal song for the 3-1 series lead blowing Maple Leafs and Hollow Notes? You make my dreams come true. And will they stop using that song for the playoffs? I think they should keep Hollow Notes, but use She's Gone instead. It better reflects hope in Toronto. One, mean, correct, but mean. For whatever reason, they like it. I unironically like the song You Make My Dreams Come True, uh, but there's something about Toronto score. It, I I know that that series is now almost two years old at this point, but going into game seven there where William Nylander scores late, but you can tell that all the energy and hope is sucked out of that building and all you hear is hollow notes is very, very funny to me, all things considered. So, like, they're going to keep it. I don't know why. Maybe they'll change it when they get a new GM in the offseason. I don't know. But I'd say, well, no. If they're going to stick with Hall Notes, they might as well stick with that. Uh, I'd say Rich Girl, but I don't know. I don't I don't think they can use that one as a goal song. Uh, this one comes from Randy Hansen. How good a cook is Rafael Harvey Pinard as he looks like a chef from a five-star restaurant? He truly does. He just has that look. Um, you Maybe I should ask his sister on Twitter, who I believe works for RDS, if I am correct. And I mean, I hope he can cook. He's been a professional hockey player now for three to four years. He's lived with a billet family, I'm sure, in uh, Ryu Narunda when he was there. I <laughs> That's a good question. We should really ask his sister on Twitter how good of a cook he is. Or maybe we'll just ask him directly. I imagine he's at least a half decent cook because I imagine he's got to feed himself decently living, you know, on his own playing for the Rocket and the Habs now. So uh, also from Randy, you were on vacation. You can only have one of limitless scotch massages or internet service. And what are you choosing? Everyone thinks I'm going to pick scotch here and they're wrong because I am a child of the internet and I cannot possibly not pick limitless in or unlimited internet because I constantly need to poop post on Twitter and talk with my friends and watch YouTube videos and watch TikTok and just scroll mindlessly because that's what I do. Limitless scotch would probably be the second one. Get some Oban little Bay, get some Macallan 12 year and massages is third because you know what? I do like a good massage, not enough to get a limitless supply of massages when I can have Full access to the internet to teach myself how to stretch better so I might not need massages as much or limit the scotch to just dull the pain from my aching bones because that is what happens the minute you turn 30, apparently. Uh, We have another question from my wonderful co-host who is not supposed to be on the internet because she is also on vacation. Who is your favorite Lockdown Canadians co-host? Well, it's not me because I am a self-depreciating human being. So obviously you're the host of the show. Uh, if I'm not picking me, uh, Ian is a great co-host, obviously, and that if, God forbid, I can never do this show, I would happily recommend him to replace me to fill in. But obviously, you are my favorite person because no one else in this world would ever put up with my deranged insanity when refereeing goes in the toilet against the Montreal Canadiens. 
Uh, Laura, please enjoy your vacation. Come back soon. I'm sure everyone else is missing you as much as I am on this show because Lord knows we could use some balance in here a little bit. We have our nemesis question of the week, and I want to take a little bit of time to break this one down here. If you were a drug kingpin, what exotic animal would be your signature pet a la Pablo Escobar and his uh, cocaine hippos? So I was going to pick hippos before I read the entire tweet. That is the first animal that popped into my mind because, okay, bears. But yeah, cocaine bears a movie now. That That is said and done. That has been killed off and is no longer the meta for picking exotic animals if I were a millionaire kingpin of some kind. Hippos is still very much at the top of my list, but if I can't pick hippos because of Pablo Escobar, I'm going to tear this down here a little bit. I would have manatees as a water animal. So I'll pick one for water, one for birds, and one kind of land animal. Maybe one reptile. We'll do four because that is what I want to do here. I would pick manatees because I think they are, in fact, hilarious, and they're giant, gentle sea cows. And could you imagine just walking into a pool and there's just a manatee? If I lived somewhere cold enough, I would get walruses. Just absolute, you know, oh, Lord, he coming chonky walruses, because that'd be hilarious. If I am picking a land animal and hippos, which could be a water and mammal too, I guess, if you're really splitting hairs, which I know you are, Will, because that's who you are as a person, and bears are out because it's overdone now, if I were picking a land animal, I mean, the answer has to be like a white tiger, right? Like some kind of big cat, I think is also like maybe the cliche answer, but a tiger makes the most sense because what other way to show off? You've got way too much illicit money than having a tiger in some way, shape or form. If I am picking birds, I'm getting great horned owls, just a, a flock of not a murder, a murderous crows only. I don't know what you call a group of owls, a hoot, a school. I, I'm hoping I got that right, but I would have nothing but great horned owls like in this giant aviary here. So when you walk in, all you hear are birds and everything in there. And if I'm picking reptiles or some kind of, it, it'd be, you know, monitor lizards, just giant monitor lizards. If you're not freaked out by the walruses, the tiger, the great horned owls, the monitor lizard might be the one to do that. I mean, they're gigantic. I don't want to get a Komodo dragon, mostly because I don't want to be bit by a Komodo dragon. I don't want to be bit by a monitor lizard. I, I don't want to be bit by any of these animals, any way, shape, or form, but especially don't want to be bit by a Komodo dragon. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I would want besides that? I mean, no polar bear counts as a bear, so man... Well, this was a good question. I hate you for that because I know it's going to absolutely go to your head here. So, uh, uh, and we have nothing in the DM. So as always, if you want to send us your mailbag questions, you can tweet us at LO underscore Canadians, uh, at myself, at Scott Matlow. When I ask for mailbag questions, LockdownCanadians at gmail.com. Usually you can pop into the YouTube comments. I am doing my best to keep up with that and also as on the prize and everything else. So thank you for understanding if I have missed any of your questions. Please just let me know so I can make sure it gets added to next week's mailbag. We are going to have some guests coming up. Like I said, we're going to talk to Patrick Bexell about some Swedish prospects, especially playing for Rogla in their playoffs there. We're going to set up a date with him soon. Myself and Jay Foster are going to set up an AHL Squadcast to talk how the Rocket and the Cleveland Monsters are both pushing for that final AHL North playoff spot and why our large adult children in the minor leagues are both terrible and we would do anything for them. And then, of course, the Habs continue their run of games. I will have all the coverage of that for you. NCAA tournaments start this week, so we might see Sean Farrell before too long. Might see some people from Northeastern. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of prospect stuff happening. We will do everything we can to keep you up to date. If anything important happens, I will have an emergency show for you. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe wherever you get your daily podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Ring the bell to get notified every time we post a brand new episode. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. Again, follow me at Scott Matla. I post GIFs. I, you know, I crap post. That is who I am as a person. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. And we will see you all next time.